All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Purpose Driven Pivot. I'm your host, uh, Greg Clay, uh, with my brother, with a good friend of mine, Mr. Xavier Peoples, uh, who's really going to talk about his new venture with uh, HBCU Change. We're going to dive deep on his journey, not just as a founder in the tech space, but just his role in making so many things go in Atlanta. Uh, this, this episode, Xavier, is special to me because you know, part of this particular platform that I'm interviewing folks is, is extending from uh, a event that I did in June of this year, where we'll book in the event next year. Uh, and Xavier was one of those people that I had come out uh, amongst probably 15, 20 people to talk about the power of investing. Uh, he really killed it, had a, a whole narrative associated with a lot of things that we'll get into today, but uh, he's been just a, a real force, not just in Atlanta, but when it comes to investing dollars and cents, when it comes to how you invest your time. Uh, he's been a political, uh, is a political, I'm not saying has been, he is a political entrepreneur, investor, uh, father. Uh, listen, man, he does it all. And he's one of those friends uh, that I look up to uh, in, in the network in Atlanta when it comes to just folks that I know continue to not just support me, but have my back. But uh, everyone, welcome uh, Xavier Peoples to the show. What's up, man? Hey, man, I'm glad to be here, man. <laughs> Better place to be. Indeed, indeed. I, I love that hat, man, that HBCU hat. He's got the background going. Listen, brother, uh, we, we are so extremely proud of you and, and the mission that you have with raising a billion dollars for HBCUs. And we're going to say at least a billion dollars in, in the context of these types of conversations, folks, because uh, he is really, uh, on the tech side, really defining a new way around how we give. Uh, myself being a fan, you alone, uh, he started right out the gate. I saw Rashawn Ali doing her thing. A uh, shout out to Rashawn, who is, who is always, always pushing the culture. Uh, and so, Xavier, man, I, I really want this to be a conversation for those folks that are watching to, to learn really about HBCUs uh, and what you're doing, how they can, can support HBCU change, and, and tell a little bit about your story and how you're pivoting. Uh, I know you're a full-time uh, employee, I won't say employee, you're a full-time investor, right? And so you do your thing in this space while you also doing your thing in that space, along with everything else. And so uh, I, I really, really love to hear uh, more about you know, just the origin story related to HBCU change, and we'll start from there. Yeah, so uh, my, my daytime job, I, I'm a private wealth advisor for a firm by the name of Capital Group. And at Capital Group, we are the largest active money manager in the world with $2 trillion on the management. And a lot of that money that we manage is money of endowments and foundations of some of the most notable institutions across this country and just one day out of curiosity I said uh, I went to our research department I said hey um, how many historically black colleges and universities do we manage because they can truly benefit from the resources and the research that we provide these bigger universities and the answer was zero and so immediately um, it clicked I jumped on a plane flew all over the country to talk to HBCUs about their endowments how they're performing and the research and the resources that we could provide. And they were just straight up with me, no matter how big or small the institution was, they said, hey, Xavier, um, this fancy research and, and these resources that you have, that's all good, but we truly have issues engaging our alumni in a meaningful way to consistently give back to the school. Mm -hmm. And so you can talk for that, we can back into this other stuff. L listen, man, I I'll tell you, Xavier, one of the things I wanna throw in there before I left FAMU, I had an internship with the FAMU Foundation. And man, it was, it was really interesting because it was, uh, God bless our institution, but it was very antiquated, man. Yep. yep. Extremely yep, so antiquated. I'm glad you touched on that point. So, <laughs> so I came back home, and I'm gonna get to that antiquated uh, point that you're making, but I came back home and I said, well, I think I have an idea. Um, but before I actually start investing and putting money into this idea, let me see and do a little research. And so we sent out a survey. And in the survey, I just simply asked, why don't you give back to your institution? Mm -hmm. Or why don't you give back to your 
institution on a consistent basis. And the number one answer was, we don't give back to our institution because we've never been asked. Mm -hmm. was, and it surprised me, um, by the way. And then mm -hmm. it was followed mostly by, we don't give back to our institution because we don't feel that we can give back a dollar amount or have a tremendous impact on the institution. Sure, so sure, sure. That's when the light bulb went off that we were right. So um, we created HB Change, which is very similar to Acorn. I don't know if you're familiar with Acorn, but Acorn yep. is an app that basically it rounds up your daily transactions to the nearest dollar. And then that difference in the change it gives to the, the stock market mm -hmm. and invest in the stock market. So I, so I mm -hmm. said, well, hey, let me create a form for HBCUs where you buy a cu cup of coffee for $3.75. We're going to round it up to $4. Mm -hmm. and that $0.25 cents is going to give to the HBCU of your choice. And on the surface, many say, well, Xavier has changed. How is that going to have an impact on the school? What we found is the average person, when you're connecting both your debit and your credit card and giving to a cause, on a low side, you give $54. On a high side, $87 a month to that cause. So a school okay. like Florida a &M University, 60,000 60, um, um, alumni, if 10,000 were just to sign up and say, hey, we're going to round up and give change to Florida a &M University, 40000 a month, $6 million a year going back to the institution. And even if my projections are off and we mm -hmm. cut that in half, $3 million a year going back to Florida A&M University is nothing to sneeze at at all. Right. And so, um, and so we're on this journey. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback. We've gotten a lot of support. And um, we're going to do this, man. You know, like you said, my, my, the goal is to raise a billion dollars mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. in, in five years. But the mission is, Greg, for us to have all HBCUs to be mm -hmm. self-sustainable. Mm -hmm and alumni and supporters that have skin in the game so they don't have to rely on sporadic big donations and sure. government funding to keep their... And, and independence is important. Uh, I, I think about, you know, yeah. even FAMU, back when we were going through leadership transitions and conversations about, hey, FAMU's about to merge with HB, with uh, FSU. Uh, that was happening around the same time I was on uh, the heel down there. And part of that was financial. Part of it was related to just so many different conversations uh, attached to sustainability, but financial independence of our institutions yields uh, more forward conversations about that independence rather than always trying to catch up, right? Yeah, you know, what, what I say is, you know, right now we're in the midst of a pandemic, uh, the George Floyd situation and the many other tragedies mm -hmm. that has happened. I firmly believe that our liberation is on the other side of economics. Um, partic particularly mm -hmm. if um, if we could uh, support our black institutions, whether that's black banks, whether that's HBCUs, whether that's black businesses, you know, we can truly get people attention if we can move our dollars and, sh and shift our dollars all in, in one direction. Mm -hmm. um, truly, that's the true impact that we can truly have. And so, um, you know, another saying that I always say is HBCU change mm -hmm. is opportunity to turn our anger into action, right? And support mm -hmm. our institutions in a way that they've never been supported before. And we can educate as many kids as can as possible and sure up these institutions so they don't have to worry about closing their doors, but they can worry about educating our kids and being as creative as possible so these kids can be the best and the brightest and be prepared for what's out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enlighten us on those conversations when you're trying to get institutions to pivot from what they've been doing. It, it may be not totally right, but certainly enhance what it is that they're doing because they've got full-time development officers and officials pulling down big salaries doing, you know, I've got my own opinions about that type of stuff, but God bless those scenarios, right? But, you know, the, the way in which you're talking about helping them pivot, how has that been on the, on the surface when you've been having conversations with these schools? Oh, so, so here's the thing, Greg. Um, at majority of the HBCUs, with the exception of a few, there are only two or three people who are in charge of the Office of Advancement and, and raising money for the institution. And so mm -hmm. if you think about it, that's a tall task. And mm -hmm. at bigger institutions, you have a whole department of 15, 20, 30 people who their mm -hmm. sole job is to raise money and to organize data for the institution. 
And so when we, we pick up the phone and when we call these institutions, these institutions is often a breath of fresh air for them because it takes and it relieves a load off of their back. Mm -hmm. But more than just a fundraising company, we are a data company. And mm -hmm. that is, we take, we go out and we organize data for HBCUs. So we give them the individual's first and last name, their email address, the amount that was raised in the individual zip code. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is, this is important to the university is, let's just say, fam, you had 200 Rattlers in Omaha, Nebraska that they knew nothing about. Now you can fundraisers in Omaha, Nebraska. What, what, what's the thing that uh, the organization y'all have here in Atlanta um, with you and St. George? Uh, Friends of Fam. Yeah, shout out to Friends shout out to the Friends of Fam. Uh huh. We we listen. We've raised over one hundred fifty thousand dollars, supporting over fifty students, mentorship. Uh, you know, we're a separate uh, nonprofit, um, and we help to enhance the alumni activities. And uh, we you know we stretch out our other brands to all the alumni organizations, alumni association, and everything. But I'm glad you brought up the Friends of Fam, man. Shout yeah, out to you. if if you knew that, or if fam, you knew that there were two hundred people in Omaha, Nebraska that they otherwise didn't know about, you could do a friends of fam in Omaha, Nebraska and raise 150,000 in Omaha, Nebraska. And so that's, that's why data is important. And when I talk to these schools, I tell them, yeah, the, the enticement of raising money um, on a consistent basis is very important. But mm -hmm. I look at it from the perspective of, you can get someone to fish and they can eat for a day, or you can teach them how to fish and they can eat for a lifetime. HBCU change, is teaching these institutions how to fish so they can eat, eat for a lifetime and that, hey, we're coming in, we're organizing data, we're showing you how to get and reclaim your alumni and supporters so that data can be organized and you can pinpoint those individuals and raise money from those individuals on a consistent basis. And so more than the fundraising company, we're a data company as well for HBCUs. Mm -hmm. how, how has the momentum been coming out of the gate uh, for you, Zay? I mean, how do you how do you feel about things? I feel good. I mean, it's it's just like any other tall task. You know, you have your good days and your bad days. Sure. But what I will say is, a lot of major, major, major corporations have been calling saying, "Hey, how can we help? How can we get down?" Because we've been looking for ways to spend money in the black community, and we like this. Is there our opportunity for us to match dollars that have been raised is an opportunity for us to adopt the school um, and so what we're doing is we are negotiating and, orga and, and organizing with these big corporations and high net worth individuals so we can double trip money that we're raising with rounding up by having these big corporations and individuals to match what have been raised um, with HBCU change as well and so there are going to be some announcements coming here in the near future that uh, are blow everyone away. And yeah. that's going to really provide people to download the app and to give because when you give that dollar, it's like giving $3. Yeah. It's going to match your, your dollar over and over again. So mm -hmm. that's going to be awesome. Now, when you started on this journey, Xavier, was that part of the strategy or was that something that you kind of pivoted into based on the response that you were getting? That's something that is uh, pivoted into it based on the response. So these people have just been reaching out based on the press that we received and, and we were making it happen. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so well, when we talk about Xavier, right, and, you know, this task, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you know, you're, you're managing a lot of different things, including being a family man, including being an entrepreneur in so many different spaces. You know, how are you spending your time differently? nowadays, you know, in addition to saying no to some things, right? How, how are you managing your time? I mean, what is it that you have kind of, uh, you know, modified as it relates to things that you're doing? I don't necessarily think I've given anything up or modified anything. I just yeah. um, more organized. And so, mm -hmm. you know, when I wake up in the morning and after I say my prayers and put my two feet on the floor, the first thing that I look at is my calendar for the day. And um, I know what my, my obligations are for the day, whether that's family time with my kids, going to their games, whether that's doing an interview, whether that's um, talking to a school, mm -hmm. or whether that's doing my daytime job. Like everything has to be in the calendar for it to get done. So mm -hmm. I won't miss anything. And, and it's just staying organized and just make sure I stay on point. That's all. 
Good, good, good. I mean, that's a nugget for people that are out there. I mean, the, you know, it, it's the same thing, really, this, this discipline around how I even manage my day, you know, and it's good to hear you mention your faith, man. You, you got to stay uh, on that compass, right? No question about it. Like, that's every day I, I thank the good Lord for, you know, allowing me to have this opportunity. You know, a lot of people say, you know, talking about that billion dollar number, I never forget when I first, I'll tell you, we were at um, the, um, with um, Maui, the Monday Men's Lab, what was it called? Yeah, Black Men's Lab. Black Men's Lab. Yeah, shout out to Black Men's Lab out there. Look, applying pressure, bro. Every Monday when COVID came, they did it virtually, doing it virtually. Like, shout out to Eldridge. Shout out to the whole crew over there, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that night when I first put that billion dollar number out there, I remember someone came up to me and they told me straight up, like, man, like, what are you talking about? This isn't going to happen, right? And so I like to put pressure on myself. And I like when people tell me that I can't do something, mm -hmm. right? And, and like you say, um, not only am I going to raise a, a billion dollars for HBCUs, I'm, I'm hoping to raise five. Yeah. Um, because I want, I want this to be something to go down in history that people can understand that we can save ourselves. We don't have to worry about the government or some type of big corporation to come in and, and, and to give us dollars. But we have the money within our own communities and we can do it ourselves. And hopefully this can be a model but to save other institutions, no matter what it is, whether it's a black bank or a black business going forward that, hey, we have it in our community. All we have to do is support our community and we can get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the website is hbcuchange.org? Dot, you dot com. Dot com, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dot com, and you can uh, download it, Apple Store, Android Store, Google Play Store, all of that. Everything, we, mm -hmm. we everywhere. You can follow mm -hmm. us on Instagram, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, we're, we're everywhere. Just HBCU change, look us up, Google us, mm -hmm. we're there. Mm -hmm. Now, no, say, go ahead. Okay. No, no, go ahead. Saying, download, 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 man. We, we need your support. It's just giving us a little change every month to give to schools. Another point I want to make is the money does not come to HBCU change. HBCU change is just a conduit. Uh, the okay. change goes directly to the institution. Um, the, typically, the inst inst institution set up their account. The money goes directly into their account on a monthly basis. And so um, we're just a conduit for the money just to flow through to go mm -hmm. directly to school. And that looks good, man. You know, I, I downloaded, man, and, and linked my stuff up, man. It looks it looks good. You know, it's crisp. You know, I got my fam you stuff going on. Look, man, it, it looks awesome, bro. Shout out to Troy Wilson, who created the app for me and was my developer on the app. Indeed, indeed. Man. Those, those partnerships matter, bro. Those partnerships matter. Xavier, so, you know, as I mentioned, you do a lot of stuff, man, right? So your lens, even in politics, right, and as a civic leader, right, because I'll share this with the viewing audience, some of the best times I've ever had in the city, man, attached to uh, MBAR, Xavier and his crew, they, I mean, invested into Auburn Avenue, historic district, uh, around African-American businesses with MBAR, uh, and not just what was a social place, but it was this place where politicians, I mean, the whole run of the spectrum of people that are plugging into uh, from sidebar conversations to large events to fundraisers, you know, Zane, how does your lens and involvement in the civic and politi political space prepared you for even moments like these? You know, beyond the relationships that you built in those spaces, you know, is there this undercurrent of this drive and ambition for you from what you've learned and seen, uh, the good and bad in, 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 in those spaces? You know, I think one thing that I've always learned um, with MBAR, um, particularly in, the, in those political events and um, social events and things of that nature, is, is bigger than me. You know, you can always make a buck, right? But, you know, the reality is that our debt of, uh, that we pay for being on this earth is, is service to others, right? And so, you know, if that's helping out a politician who I, I really believe that um, they're, they are about the people and doing right in the community, I'm going to go all in, I'm going to raise money for them, I'm going to give them money, and, and we, it's going to be all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. If that's feeding um, 400 homeless people 
downtown Atlanta and using my bar as a hub to make sandwiches and, and things of that nature. Or if it's um, to keep the homeless people from um, using the restroom on the street to open up my bar and allow them to come in and use the restroom inside the bar versus using it out on the street, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to make my community better, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you are uh, blessed and you have a thriving business, I think it's important that you don't just take from the community, but you give to the community and be a part of the community. And that's what MBAR is. We're closed for renovation right now. We're gonna open back up in January, but that's what we're gonna continue to do. Mm -hmm. as long as I'm, I'm in power, for sure. mm -hmm. do, do you find yourself leaning into a lot of those relationships still for you know, putting wind in the cell for, for HBCU change? And, and, and what's your message to people that are seeing this that can do similar things, right? What, what, what I will say is um, owning MBAR, being civically engaged, being socially engaged, what it did for me as an individual, um, it created a um, different level of respect in the community, right? So you're a business owner who not only um, do you have a cool dope spot, but you also give to the community, right? And so, man, y'all, uh, man, let, let, let me interject here, man. Y'all, man, y'all swinging for the fences, man. It really is a lead by example vibe, yep. Xavier. Let, let me just say that because as soon as you mentioned that, I was like, yeah, you know, that, that is so true in the essence of, you know, this lens that I have of you as a person, not just as a friend, but also many other things. Man, that is a, a true lead by example way, and not a lot of black businesses are even doing that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just believe that um, life is about reciprocity, right? So um, you don't give to get, but you get because you give, yeah. right? So whether that's me and you going over to the bluff and giving kids toys who don't have anything, and, and this last minute we scrambling, and I, we we doing an event and we getting people to come in and give us toys so we can go and deliver these toys. Well, we've done some scrambling, boy. Right. Or mm -hmm. uh, three hundred kids getting toys, bikes, and books um, mm -hmm. from the um, old Atlanta party that we do every Christmas, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I believe that that's what life is all about, and and that's why um, I have the cachet and the respect of a lot of people who will go to bat for me when I'm doing a big endeavor like HBCU Change because they've seen what I've done um, here locally and they want to support what I'm doing nationally with all HBCUs as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about local uh, HBCUs, you know, the Atlanta community. Uh, as a lot of folks know, uh, the Atlanta University Center, Morehouse, Spelman, Clark Atlanta, and Morris Brown. Uh, I know that Morris Brown is one of those first schools that are a part of uh, the there's a there's a phased rollout that you have with the schools. That's right. Um, so we're, we're rolling them out in phases, and uh, Morris Brown is in that first phase. Mm -hmm. Listen, Morris Brown, we we cannot have any more Morris Browns, and and also Morris Brown is three million dollars away from getting their full accreditation back and being able to open their doors and. Um, fully function as a university. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. um, I've committed to Morris Brown to helping them to get that $3 million. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, it's an all hands on deck approach with them and, mm -hmm. and we're gonna get it done for them. They have a, a, a great president, um, a great staff over there. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're gonna get it done for them. And then as far as um, Clark Atlanta, uh, Morehouse and Spelman, you know, Morehouse and Spelman, they get it in as, as far as the big dollars. And, and oftentimes, Clark Atlanta is skipped over for whatever reason. And you so, know, why, why do you think that is the case, David? You know, you're right. Um, I want to say that just so happened with Morehouse and Spelman, you, you got the legacy of Dr. King. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of prominent people had kids to go there. Whereas with Clark, you got a lot of prominent people who had the kids go to Clark as well. But um, I don't know what the, what the idiosyncrasies are with Morehouse and Spelman, but they've done a good job of branding over the years. And so that brand, if, if you ask any um, 
white person, if you will, about uh, HBCU, probably the first schools that they're going to say is Morehouse and Spelman followed closely by Howard, right? Gotcha. Uh, so gotcha. with that brand, and you, and fam you, no miss with you, but uh, shout out to Howard too, man. Howard is a, uh, I mean, it's they they swing up for the fences up in DC, man. So I think with that brand, that's just what people know. So they give to those institutions, and so. But my thing is with, with schools like Clark, um, with, with Clark being here in Atlanta, again, it's all hands on deck for Clark Atlanta. We're going in for Clark. Like literally, mm -hmm. um, in terms of marketing dollars, mm -hmm. I'm putting a lot of marketing dollars behind Clark Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to do more than 10,000 um, users for Clark. We want to mm -hmm. do 15 or 20,000 users for Clark. So that's a solid. That's some solid folks on staff over there at Clark, too. Um, you know, I'm thinking Keezer, Jolene, like all of those folks over there, man, that uh, if, if they haven't seen or heard of, you know, what it is that you're doing, uh, we'll make sure that we plug, plug you with them and have those conversations. Absolutely. And Dr. French, the, the president of Clark, man, he's the real deal. So. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Man. I'm glad they got some strong leadership going forward, too, man. And, and as it relates to those plugs, man, shout out to uh, JR. I mean, just with Payne College, like even yeah. just in the promotion of this particular conversation, one of my contacts reached out to me that attend Payne College. Uh, we got on the phone and he got the information and now he's going to work with his team at Payne to make sure that they're part of this history and this phase rollout with HBCU change. And, you know, for those folks that are watching this, that, uh, believe in HBCU culture, may not even attend at HBCU, you know, hitting Xavier up, man. I mean, we're on the phone, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes? Yep. Yep. It done. yep. And, what, and what's understood really doesn't have to be, you know, talked about for an hour and a half. Now, those conversations do have to have, happen sometimes, but uh, it's, as, it's as simple as that when it comes to if you're willing to put the work in to raise this money. Um, because I think what, what Xavier and his team have done a phenomenal job of saying, hey, we're going to build this ship. And if you want to get on this ship, we all going to be working to get it done. I think that's the essence of what, what you're building, brother. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and, and the biggest thing is, you know, I just can't reiterate this enough. Um, you know, I say buy black, bank black, be black, and, and support black institutions, man. Like, you know, it's become a cliche, if you will, but we have to kind of move beyond it just being a cliche and really dig in and really support these institutions. If any of these institutions institutions close under our watch, it's nobody's fault but ours. And so we can't have that happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Morris Brown conversation, and not to belabor that, that dialogue, but it's an example that we can point to here right around the corner um, that speaks to the mission the essence of the mission of HBCU change. Uh, while, you know, the, the story around what happened is, is, you know, it's out there, it's public knowledge. We do know that sustaining the, the mission and the goals of that institution, I mean, even from the buildings, you know, there's been controversy around, you know, the assets that the institution has. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a story that is getting life based on what you want to do and partnering with them with HBCU change. Amy. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. Morris Brown, I want to say, was the first historically black college to be founded by black people. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you think about that, um, it, to me, it hurts that that school was on the brink of closing and lost its accreditation, mm -hmm. right? Like, we have to own that. We have to do whatever we need to do to um, support that school so that school can open up and it can rise again. And so um, we just can't allow that to happen. Like these schools are in trouble. So think about it. Um, currently, right now, just to give you a couple of stats, um, majority of the HBCUs are experiencing a 40% dropout rate. So these, these kids are saying, I'm not paying you tuition to do online learning. I'll just go to this community college where it's cheaper, mm -hmm. do online learning, and then when you all open back up, we'll come back in. Mm -hmm. Another thing is majority of the schools are losing roughly about $20, $20 million a year. Why? 
because HBCUs make their money off of room and board and food services. Well, doors are closed, kids aren't on campus, kids aren't eating, so they're losing money on a daily basis. And so if we don't jump in right now, there are schools, particularly the mid size and the smaller schools, mm -hmm. those schools are really at risk more than any of them of closing. And mm -hmm. yes, they may get some kind of government funding and things of that nature, but the government funding is just a band-aid. We have to really solve the issue and that is give back to these schools so they can sustain themselves, particularly during these tough times and come out stronger on the, on the other side when kids start going back to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so Xavier, after we reach this billion dollar mark, right? The technology is really, the infrastructure that you guys have laid, this beautiful app that you've laid, it really kind of works itself, right? So, you know, the company is, is vertical, billion dollars is raised, continuing to grow the endowments at schools. You know, what's your vision, you know, beyond that when it comes to HBCU change? Are you looking to dive deeper on some of the other issues uh, related to HBCUs? You know, are you interested in, you know, founding some other tech-based companies to, to get more data in? I mean, what's the, what's the plan when we cross that threshold? Well, I think the financial issues with HBCUs are so deep and so vast. Um, right now i'm that is just my only focus mm -hmm. uh your school florida a m university I, uh, I had the opportunity to visit florida a m um late last year mm -hmm. maybe early this year it was early this year now had you ever been on campus in college days Zach? yeah several times okay but okay okay this time i did a tour of the campus specifically the athletic facilities it looks very it looks very different from when i was down there it very, is very different, man. Like, I am extremely proud of the growth. Wish it would have happened while I was down there, but it is a different school. But what, but what I will say is that now the gym, but the football athletic facilities, you went to Mays High School. Mays weight, weight room is better than Florida a and weight room right now. Yeah, I'm glad you, I got a call about that, too, because our, our stadium is uh, under this. Condemned. Yes. Right, so the stadium is condemned. The, the, the locker room for the football team um, is worse than a lot of APS football team locker rooms and weight rooms. And this is a team that went 9-1 last year. So I said, my We should have played in the uh, Celebration Bowl. You know, we had the penalty and of sanctions. We should have set the city on fire, man. That's a whole other conversation. But imagine if you all had the tools and the resources and these kids don't even have proper uh, places to recover if they get injured, mm. okay? They don't have ice tubs. They don't have any of those things at all, right? So imagine if these schools had everything that they needed to do. And, it, you know, lately we've been having the conversations around black athletes going to HBCUs. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if someone flies into Tallahassee, and then they go and visit FAMU, and then they walk across the street and they go to Florida State University, what school do you think they're gonna go to? It's a tough conversation, man. And some of those facilities, brother, I've been in a few, especially going to the University of Kansas. I mean, it is a different, I mean, it's almost like professional sports, man. It's just the amount of money that they invest into that side of the, their, their sports, not just in the complex, the, con the consumer, uh, facing things, but on behind the scenes, it's just a different game. What I will say is, so going yeah. back to um, negotiating with, with corporations, uh, we're in the midst of negotiation with a, a major league that um, they're committed to giving $300 million to black causes over the next 10 years. And what I'm negotiating is, hey, can you all come in and outfit HBCU's um, football facilities? Okay. And so um, if you say you want to give the black causes, here's something that you can plug into right now that's needed mm -hmm. that um, schools can truly benefit from. And so um, they're definitely open to the conversation. And so we're, we're dialing in. And so we're using this platform at HBCU Change to um, get these big corporations and get these big leagues to come in 
and, and truly to bless these schools how they need to be blessed. You know, Xavier, you really, man, um, you answered the question, and, and you know, I'm a vision guy, you know, so I'll throw it out there. You answered this question for me about kind of what's next after that, that billion dollar threshold is reached because there is so much more to really get done when it comes to sustaining the growth of schools. There's so many different types of conversations, even just to just isolate the athletic component that we just mentioned, you know, the, the intellectual narrative that needs to even happen in that space, aside from dollars and cents, that HBCU change can, can really lead. You know, these, these consortiums, uh, think tanks, uh, where ideas around the undercurrent, of course, is financial, but let's talk about all of these issues to provide awareness. And in that awareness, there's advocacy, just like you mentioned to these, these other entities and these corporate organizations. They, that, that need isn't going anywhere, man. Absolutely. So one thing that we're doing is we're, we're putting together a conference, a different conference right now. Okay. We're doing two conferences. We're going to do one conference strictly for the HBCUs. And so what we're doing is we're bringing in some of the, the, the biggest and the best black marketing gurus in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, to talk to H HBCUs on how to brand themselves and how to market themselves to get more students to be aware mm -hmm. of their institution, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're, on, the, on the flip side, we're going to have that same conversation with HBCU alum and supporters as well with these same individuals who are going to tell HBCU alum and supporters how to brand and market their, their businesses, right? And this goes with the kind of underlying um, black businesses as a whole for HBCU alum so we can continue to build out the black ecosystem, the black infrastructure, so we can be better as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so those digital conferences are coming um, um, the second week of November, right after the election. And so look out for them. And you're going to be amazed with the people who we have um, who's committed to being on panelists on this platform. And, and so we expect um, a multiple of millions of people to join this conference. Good. Now, now was that, would you consider that something that you had to pivot into as well? Was that part of the original kind of strategy when it comes to this, this being this consortium of ideas? As evolved as um, people, so what, what's happening is we, when we get press, people call. And so you'll have, this marketing guru who, has, who literally has 8 million followers and he's saying, hey, this is how I can help you all, right? And what we're going to do is, in order for you to get, get into the conference, you got to download HBCU Change and then we'll shoot you out a code that'll give you access to the conference. Mm -hmm. So, um, just things to um, create engagement, to get people locked in, to, to download the app, mm -hmm. to uh, support HBCUs, and then because of that, we're going to give you a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information for some, from some of the best people in the world when it comes to marketing and innovation. Mm -hmm. And for that coming up right in November, man, that's, that's right around the corner. I, I think about the holiday season um, and end of year giving strategies around that, uh, that, that evolve from those types of conversations. Uh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, so the, the election is on November 3rd, mm -hmm. um, hopefully. The right candidate wins, yeah. and uh, with, with the VP being a um, HBCU alum, um, I think that's really going to kind of kind of push us into the stratosphere when it comes to a, a, a more focus on HBCUs and people giving back to HBCUs. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we're working on is, um, fingers crossed, we want to do a, a, a national HBCU give back day. Um, brought to you by HBCU Change. So you know how you have these holidays, National Donut Day, or whatever day, National Tequila Day, whatever. We're going to do a National HBCU Give Back Day. We're, we're literally, um, uh, we're working with the Congressional Black Caucus to, to bless this day and all hands on deck. I love it. Try to give back to the HBCUs on this particular day. And it's going to be brought to you by HBCU Change. And one way to give back is download HBCU Change and round up and give some change uh, to the HBC of your choice. I so love it, man. Those are some of the things that we have on the horizon. Um, we're really going to do this thing, man. Again, a um, billion dollars is more than attainable, and I, I think we're going to get to that number 
a lot quicker than five years for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, you know, Black History Month in February, uh, you know, a lot of momentum around, you know, just conversations. Now we know you keep it to the throttle, you know, 365. Yeah, I mean, um, I think what's in our immediate future, you got, um, although a lot of homecomings have been canceled, there are a lot of virtual homecomings that are mm -hmm. on the horizon. Um, there are a lot of founder days for the institutions. I think uh, Fam U's is October the 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. And so we're just gonna play off of these things that happen all day, every day, and, and use those things as team board to remind people the importance of giving back and, and giving them an easy way to give back to their institution. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Xavier, you know, what else do, you know, from a founding standpoint, you know, aside from the, the HBCU narrative, aside from, you know, the MR conversation as an entrepreneur, any other industries uh, really attractive to you right now? And I know you say you're going full throttle with HBCU change, but, you know, just if, if you had, you know, your pick from an industry standpoint, any of them attract, attract you right now? I mean, at the end of the day, um, tech is where it is and tech is where it's going to be. You know, mm -hmm. people talk about the, the stock market every day and how um, we had that, you know, the, the, the market dipped about 30 to 40 percent in March and it, it roared back um, mm -hmm. since then. But people don't realize that the true recovery is, hasn't been the actual market itself. It's probably been focused on about 10 to 15 stocks, which are all tech stocks. Your, your Facebooks, your Apples of the world, your Googles of the world, your Netflixes of the world. Those are, are the companies that are carrying the stock market right now, okay? And so with that being said, my focus is studying these companies, studying what they're doing. So I can um, equip my company to grow and potentially be one of those companies one day as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has social media, you know, when you think about, you know, technology and the, and the overlap, uh, I know social media and the data that you pull from there, how has that been beneficial to you, you know, overall? I mean, social media is, is, is everything because um, as, as you can see, I'm posting all day, every day, mm -hmm. um, have the ads going, um, the video where Rashawn Ali has over uh, 15,000 views. And so what that does is it allows us to get the, the marketing and the word out. And so um, we got more videos that we're dropping this week. And so the content, we're just gonna keep rolling the content out, keep getting the word out. And then it's our job to um, number one, um, make people aware of the app, but then convert those, that awareness into actual users of the app. And so that's incumbent upon us to tell the story and make people um, feel compelled to support uh, historically black colleges and universities through us and so that's what we're going to do mm -hmm. the story over and over again until you get tired and say damn it i just need to download and do it that's what's up man as a father are you having that hbcu conversation right now uh, with your kids and uh, you know are you having a conversation with nicole how, how is the, the hbcu dialogue in the in the people's household my daughter, you know, my wife went to Spelman, so my daughter mm -hmm. had no choice but uh, to go to Spelman. So Spelman is uh, ingrained in her all day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, but, this, but the same thing, you know what's funny? Um, out of all of my entrepreneurship, I never um, like directly tell my kids what I'm doing, but they always know what I'm doing. And, and what I'm saying is, um, I don't force what I'm doing on my son. Literally, I can have both of my sons sitting right here watching this interview and listening to this interview. But um, I just was curious the other day, and I, I talked to my 10 year old and said, Hey, do you know what dad is doing with his app? He said, Yeah, HBCU change. And, and he gave me the whole rundown about it. And, and the thing is, he hears me and he sits outside of my office all day long and he hears me doing interviews all day long. And That's so powerful. the mission is, he knows what the goal is and he's trying to figure out how he can get down and help and support as well. 
And so um, at ten years old, ten years old. And so, oh, um, you know, you remember that commercial when we when we were growing up when the kid was doing drugs and then um, the the dad asked the kid, he says, uh, "How do you, where, where did you get these drugs and why are you doing drugs?" And then the kid I learned said, it from watching you. I learned it from watching you. Man, and, I didn't even thought about that in <laughs> commercials, man. Yeah, and so, but but that is so real. Like your kids are watching you every single day and so um there's no doubt in my mind that all three of my kids are going to be entrepreneurs because they see their dad grind day in and day out and they know what it is like literally we had to leave a birthday party early today because i had to come and jump on with you but they, <laughs> i'm they, sorry they, i'm sorry nah, they, good. they good but they understand what it is man like they they know when when it's time for dad to go to work uh, and i do it to support them and, and i i explain that hey um, you can't live the life that you live if daddy don't go to work and work hard every day. And so that, that's the small sacrifice that you have to make. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the HBCU uh, sports kind of conversation, because we know that it is a, when you think about marketing uh, and how much money is generated in, you know, uh, for colleges and universities, you know, your thoughts on this narrative shifting around athletes going to HBCUs? I know that you support it, right? Uh, but your thoughts, additional thoughts on as colleges are, are, are talking through, you know, how they survive in, in times like these, those bigger institutions, of course, you know, they've got those endowments that are going to carry them. But, you know, what, what are your thoughts on more athletes that, that are going the HBCU route? I have a couple of thoughts on it. And actually, my opinion may not necessarily be the most popular opinion. Uh, oh, should we shoot? We, we, we could, yeah. What I will say is, um, again, using the example of Florida a and m and FSU, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of families aren't HBCU families. Mm -hmm. Many, you got a, a son who's an amazing athlete. Um, a lot of these kids aren't necessarily dialed into the historic traditions of historically black colleges and universities, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're not dialed into the historical significance of historical black colleges and universities, how can you expect a kid just to walk on campus and say, hey, this is where I want to go because this next step, I want to be a pro at whatever I'm doing, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you look at facilities, you look at the, the coaching and, and, and the training because their ultimate goal is to get to the next level. If you want to be um, the best person in, in tech or, or what have you, what school are you going to go to, right? It's, it, that's the same thing for sports. And so I think it's important that, again, going back to the mission of HBCU change, yep. that these schools become self-sustainable and they have the money to have the best facilities for these kids to come to the school. Until then, I can understand why a kid would choose um, a, a PWI over a HBCU just looking at the facilities alone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. now, we're going to need some um, some people to kind of break that mold because, like, um, there's a kid, Maker Maker, he's a top 10 kid. He chose Howard over UCLA, right? But guess what? Howard has great facilities, okay? Howard isn't the, the normal HBCU. And so mm -hmm. until we build out these HBCUs and give them the funding and the financing that they need, then they can attract the athletes that they need to make more money for them to have these power teams and have all these TV contracts because everybody wants to see them play. Good. That's good. good. That's a real point, though. I mean, I, I could see how folks would, you know, creatively push back on that. But I, I agree with you, man. You know, there are some things that, you know, and I learned of, right, FAMU situation regarding even the brag. Uh, that, that's just the stadium. My first question was, how the hell did it get that way? You know, that was kind of just, you know, through deductive reasoning, you're always kind of like, okay, how, how did we get here, right? And not only do you lead a conversation on how do you get here, you know, a lot of conversations that I've had about it is how can we help, right? Some people just stay in this, uh, you know, this kind of space with it. But 
just for clarity, I'm part of that how to get help crowd, right? Uh, which is about 10% of people just to be candid with you. And we're trying to recruit more. Uh, but I certainly agree with you, man. I, I could see how that dynamic uh, when, you, when you are a athlete and you're 18 years old, 17 years old, trying to think about what's best for you and your future, and you may not know about, you know, Morehouse, so you may not know about FAM, you kind of sort of heard about Howard. Uh, I can understand that. And they're recruiting, right? You've seen them since you were eight years old. That's just different, too. And also, if, if you talk to a, a coach at an HBCU, they don't even have a budget to get on a road to um, go and get in the living rooms of these athletes anyway. And mm -hmm. so um, the, the, there, there's a coach. I don't, I'm careful to name schools because I don't want to kind of throw them under the you, you don't have to, man. Don't, you don't have to. Coach at an HBCU, of, of a, um, they had a great basketball team. And literally, he was going in his pocket to feed his players because they didn't have the budget to feed his players and, and his kids were hungry. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that. Again, you choosing the HBCU versus a, a, a bigger school where literally they got a, a cafeteria with – all you can eat at the bottom of their apartment building 24 hours a day. Like, what are you going to choose, right? You're going to choose a school where they don't have a budget to feed you or a choose where they have all the amenities and more um, to, to give to you. And so, like... Hey, listen, I, I will, not to cut you off, man, listen. I just, I, as soon as you said that, something popped in my mind. You know, my wife went to a uh, a very popular school in the Southeast, to, to not name a school, right? Uh, predominantly white institution. And we were on campus for a wedding, Xavier. And we just kept happened to go to uh, this very nice cathedral. I mean, <laughs> something I've never, I'm looking around like, you know, I've never seen this before. We go to the cafeteria there. And Xavier, they had different flavors of like seltzer waters. Yeah. Like you could, mix you make your own custom like self awards yeah. and they were sitting at the table talking they like shani what is your fiance i was a fiance i said what is he over there doing and i was amazed <laughs> the fact listen man i'm over there like i can't believe this yeah. you know it, it, it was it was it's different yeah. you know and and i can understand when a kid walks into a not just facilities, sporting complex, when you walk on campus, when you walk into, you know, these spaces, the dorms, the, the, it, it, it's, when the money is there, it's a very different look, feel, experience around this time of your life that you always thought of and dreamed of. So imagine if we create a perfect world where you have the tradition of HBCUs with the, the upgraded, updated facilities mm -hmm. on HBCU campuses. Showtime. So big time showtime. Mm -hmm. and, and imagine how um, even even more or even better equipped our kids will be when they go out into the world if we give them access to all the resources that they could possibly have. Yep. Like we make it in spite of. Uh, imagine if we have something that can truly springboard us to the next level. Like you think. Black people are dynamic now. They are truly be dynamic if we had all the resources that we needed to really push through at our institutions. And so that's what this is all about. Indeed, indeed. Xavier, man, my last kind of topic I wanted to cover before uh, getting out of here, man, because we try to keep these to around an hour. Uh, Xavier, you've done a lot, man. You know, I know that you, you know, we talked a lot about living in your prime and swinging for the fences during your prime. That gets me just excited thinking about it. Uh, all the things that you continue to do, investing, entrepreneurship, now tech founder, you know, being from Atlanta, now living in Atlanta. How, I mean, how does it feel being a hometown hero, man? I mean, it's, you know, you, you see people that you've seen since you were, you know, yay high, that you played ball with, you know, people that you socialize with. I mean, how does it feel, man? Listen, man, I feel regular. You know, when I go and I, I talk to kids at school. You can do this. Is, uh, you, can, you can be straight with me, man. You can just. <laughs> when I go talk to these kids, I tell them, I say, listen, I'm just a regular guy from Glenwood. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't really nothing special about me. The only thing is that um, I'm not afraid to fail. And so that's the difference probably between me and the, and the next man. And that is that 
I'm willing to um, risk my money, risk my time, and uh, and, and and fail forward. And um, in the midst of it, if I just so happen to connect and have some success, then it's all good. And so, um, how does it feel? I mean, just wake up every day and I just do what I'm put on God's earth to do, man. That's just how I feel. That's it. Oh, Amen. Hey, well, if you have it here, folks, Xavier Peoples, the founder of HBCU Change. Uh, you know, Xavier, your, your experience embodies why it is that I want to make sure that I'm conversing with people like you on this platform because, you know, one of the beautiful things that you have really highlighted is the way that even as you pivoted, not totally in your career, but just starting a tech-based company, how the evolution around press, how the evolution around, you know, ideas have come to the table, pivoting into those things have been fruitful conversations for you that I think is going to yield uh, fruit, man, like you've never seen before uh, for a cause that I believe in and a cause uh, a lot of folks believe in, man. And I'm just proud to, to see it, proud to be a part of it. And uh, for folks walk, watching, download HBCU Change. Again, it's Apple, it's in the Google Play Store, hbcuchange.com, visit the website, get more information. And if you really, really want to lean into this issue, not just connect with you know, folks like Xavier and HBCU Change, uh, adopt the ideology that Xavier's been talking about. You know, this, this support, this financial support for those things that you live in, uh, it, it's, it's real, it's real. And it's almost different than any other thing that we've conversed about. You know, I speak about this often, Xavier, when I talk about this period of 1970 to 2070 and that 100 year increment when it comes to uh, how we will tell the story for generations to come and this tipping point around our involvement, specifically in things like these. And so I'm proud of you, man. Uh, any, any last words at all that you have uh, on behalf of HBCU Change and uh, the, the folks representing from Glenwood all the way to downtown, to Auburn Avenue, man. Any, any, any words, man? And listen, no, I just want to say thank you, man. Thank you for your support. Um, and just encourage people, man, just to, even even if, just download the app, just look at it. You know, even if, you know, uh, you don't connect your card or anything, just download it, look at it, because it's something that we're very proud of. And um, just watch, man. We, we're about to make history, and we're going to raise that billion dollars, man. And so, um, we're, we're on our runway. We're on our way. And so um, support, support, support. And thank you. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Well, extremely excited for you, man. And, uh, you know, be sure to check everything out that's coming forward with HBCU Change, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us, Avery. Uh, keep up the good fight. Uh, you know, we got your back, man, and we're extremely, extremely proud of you, bro. All right, folks, we'll see you soon.